Hey guys, I'm Ilya with 2ProBeats and in today's video I want to showcase my new PC. It's been a few months using it and I want to show you the configuration that I have, the CPU, graphic card, SSD and all that uh, technical stuff. Then I want to do some non-scientific tests inside Studio One, showcasing how many plugins this machine can run. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, hit that notification button, let's go. <laughs> Okay, so as you can see, this is a Windows based uh, system. I have an AMD processor, 32 gigabytes of RAM. Now let's go more in depth and let me show you exactly what I have on the system. I'm gonna bring up a screenshot of the actual order that I've placed for this PC. So this PC is uh, custom build. I've chosen the parts, the shop uh, assemble it. So let's start with the first thing, the case. The case is a Fractal Design uh, Define R5 Titanium with a window. It has soundproofing, so it's a pretty nice uh, case. I don't have any issue with uh, noise with it. Next, as you can see, I've purchased a legit copy of Windows. I'm gonna talk about the SSD later in the videos now let's focus on the other parts for the memory I went with uh, Corsair Vengeance 32 gigabytes of RAM that's more than enough for mixing the power supply is Seasonic Focus Platinum this is a pretty powerful uh, power supply because the CPU needs a lot of power the graphic card needs a lot of power the motherboard is from MSI this is probably the cheapest alternative for this uh, CPU socket the CPU is the AMD Ryzen Threadripper. It has 16 cores, 32 threads. It's a really powerful uh, CPU. Graphic card is the MSI GeForce RTX, the new series, the 2080. This is the overclocked version with 8 GB of uh, RAM. Then I have a few coolers. This uh, build is uh, air cooled. I'm using some uh, Fractal Design coolers for the case. And for the CPU, I'm using Cooler Master Master Air, the edition for this specific socket so this is the exact build that i have inside the case so in terms of storage i have a few ssds uh, installed in the machine the first one is just for the operating system it only has 250 gigs i use it for the operating system and for the software that i have installed so the operating system is the cheapest i really don't need the fastest ssd for the operating system the next one is in the middle in terms of price and performance i use this to keep most of my files like mixing sessions, videos, and uh, things like that. The next one is the most uh, expensive one. It's a Samsung SSD, the top tier one, and it's a bit smaller. It's the same size as the operating system. And I use this just to, to work on it. So when I'm working on a project, I have all the files on this specific SSD. After finishing the project, I move the files and everything to the big uh, one terabyte SSD. That's how I work. And also this SSD is used for my video projects for editing because when editing videos you really need a faster SSD so at the moment I also have two external hard drives I use them for backups and to keep like uh, sample libraries and things like that so when it comes to backup I have uh, most of my files in two different places and I have an automatic backup uh, software that does the backup on a daily basis I also do it manually probably once a week and that's it when it comes to storage now that we have all that stuff out of the way, I want to do a couple of tests. Inside Studio One, I want to see how much CPU power I have with this new build. On the screen, I have the performance monitor from Studio One and also I have the task manager. So the first test, stock plugins. Let's see how many stock plugins can I use inside Studio One. Let's build like a channel strip. Let's add an EQ, engage a few bands, just like this. Let's add a compressor, something like this. Let's also add a room reverb and let's add a delay. Let's say analog delay. I will add just a hi-hat sample, just like that. So we have 64 tracks. And this is with over 100 tracks. 
what I want to do now is see if the playback has any artifacts. It's just fine, it's responsive. The PC feels a bit laggy, but that's normal. Now let's move to a different plugin. I want to try the Shep's Omni Channel and see how many I can get. So as default, the Omni Channel has all the, the modules bypassed. I'm going to enable all of them, just like this. And let's see how many can we get. So we're at 128 and the CPU load is pretty low. So the only channel is pretty amazing when it comes to optimization in size to the one. Over 100 channels of filters, gates, uh, de-sync, EQ, compressors. So that's crazy. The playback, it's, it's just fine. Everything feels responsive. Now I'm gonna try and duplicate one more time let's go over 200 tracks the only problem is that it takes a lot of time duplicating all the tracks let's go okay so at over 200 tracks studio one is starting to act up Now let's try with a few FabFilter plugins. I wanna add an EQ. Let's open up a preset. Let's make it dynamic, why not? Like for vocals with a lot of EQ points, a compressor, a reverb, and why not some saturation. Let's see how many tracks we can get with FabFilter plugins. So we have 64 tracks. The reverb is hitting the CPU pretty hard. So this is really great with 64 tracks. Now I want to remove the reverb from the session and do it just with EQ, compression and saturation. And let's see what we can achieve. The loading time is pretty fast with this one. And again, we have over 250 tracks. When you start hitting this high threshold on the on the CPU, Studio One is not that responsive. Let's remove the saturation and see how many tracks can we get with just EQ and compression. My guess is that we'll get a lot of tracks because uh, FabFilter plugins are really optimized and uh, they don't have a really big CPU hit. So right now in Studio One, I am at 100% CPU use with FabFilter Pro Q3 and uh, Pro C2. I want to see with how many tracks Studio One is stable with uh, FabFilter plugins. Now with this sort of load, the project is really slow and uh, you cannot work in these uh, conditions. As you can see, we have a difference between the CPU meter in uh, Studio One and the one in Task Manager. Let's take out a few tracks from my experience when you are around 80 percent in studio one the project works just fine when you go above that uh, 80 percent things are starting to move slower the project feels slower and clunky you have to keep that in mind with 800 tracks the project still is not feeling great let's remove 100 more i really like that the project didn't crash studio one that's really important so now as you can see we're moving below 80 percent the project will feel much better the playback will be smooth so everything responds much better but this is a crazy amount of tracks we have 700 tracks with eq and compression let's see if the playback is working the mixer still feels a bit laggy 
as you can see we have CPU spikes with 700 tracks let's remove some more until we have a smooth playback let's try with 500 tracks you have to know that for this test I'm not using the fastest SSD that I have available in the in the build so yeah with 500 tracks the playback is smooth I think this is sort of the limit of uh, fab filter plugins on this system the mixer it's still pretty laggy that's what I don't like about it let's try and close it and make it smaller as you can see everything moves with lag that might be because I'm also recording in OBS but as you can see in task manager OBS is just taking uh, GPU power is not taken from uh, the CPU the GPU is a really powerful one and I got it just for this purpose so I can record while I'm doing tutorials a bit more responsive but still not great now let's move on to another plugin so even removing 500 tracks from the project takes a bit of time in uh, Studio One. Next I want to try a few plugins that I know that they use a lot of CPU. For instance, Suit with uh, oversampling on and with uh, high resolution. I want to see how many I can get in a project. With Suit you have oversampling and you have the resolution. I know that this takes a lot of CPU and this is meant to be used just for offline when you're rendering or when you're using it on the audio events. So without oversample and uh, resolution things are pretty good. Let's see if I increase the oversampling. It increases the CPU load but with the ultra resolution you can already see that this is pretty crazy. 8 tracks, 16 tracks of suit and you can already see that the CPU is going crazy. The project seems really responsive, you can work on it, playback is really smooth, a strange thing happens, let's see if this refreshes, no. You can see that we have a few instances of suit that are at 100% even though the CPU is at around 50 most of the time with some uh, some spikes. This is pretty insane with 16 tracks of suit with oversampling and the ultra resolution. And I think that with this basic test you have an idea on how powerful this machine is. I can mix without thinking about bouncing to track, I can uh, master, I can do video editing. A few issues that I have is with Studio One, probably with Windows, I feel that the entire platform is really not up Optimized. A few things are not that great, for example, the CPU use is showing that I have 100% CPU use on suit. Now it's refreshed, but there are small things like this. For example, I have some issues with real-time rendering. It's pretty annoying. So this is my new PC. If you have any suggestions on how I should test it when it comes to audio, let me know. I will try and do that. If you enjoyed the video, please subscribe, hit the notification button, drop a like, leave a comment with suggestions, follow me on Instagram, follow me on Facebook, and see you guys next week. Cheers. Hey.